Hi, thanks for tuning in. This is a weekend review for the week ending August 2nd, 2024. We're looking at a weekly chart of the S&P 500. Do we have a change in trend? Not exactly. Did we get a sell signal? Yes, we did. We got this sell signal. The yellow line crosses below the orange line. Sell signal fired last on April 15. It was instantly met with a buy. This is what happens to weekly sell signals when the monthly is still above all moving averages and in a buy signal. Right, as you can see, monthly EMA5, SMA10, bull cross, fired, 2023. Okay, so until we get a bear cross, we don't have any conditions that have changed. We don't have a bear market. We don't have a massive correction. Full stop. That being said, we we're below last month's low. We're at the orange, the yellow line. Failure to catch a bid here at 530 opens up the orange line, which is 511, where you are likely to find a bid. No bid there, 467. Okay, right now you're still above the green line on the weekly and the slope is up. Let's give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Okay, why do I say that? Because these divergences can go on for a while. Look, you got it back here. See, EMA5, SMA10, bear cross, pull back to the weekly, stayed at the 20 for three weeks, and then rallied to another high before starting the correction. Okay? And how do we know this was a problem? You could start telling it was a problem back here when you were making it a new all-time high. This is good. New high in momentum. This is good. But you pull back a higher low, a lower high in momentum. So this is when you're starting to see the problem. Then you break the higher low pattern, which we've just done. I think we've just done. Let's double check. This is 3.089, 3.03. So we just did break the pattern. So it's just like right here, okay? Where you pull back to the 20, the 20 holds but momentum does not hold the higher low, okay? And so we're starting to see cracks in the momentum that has been strong for a year plus, okay? So this is the first way I'm looking at this. This is, this is uh, bearish. We just came to the 20. Why are we here again? It's also normal to revert to mean. We also do expect 526 to hold in some some fashion on the first test. Use them into the daily and you've got yourself still a massive sell signal. As you can see, yellow line below orange line. And it's been here since the 17th. Okay, we zoom out. Remember this trend line on the monthly that no one, everyone made fun of the bears for bringing up, well, here it is again. So if this does form morph into something way, way deeper, it would make sense that it would start from here. Also, that being said, we have a weekly divergence. It would make sense that if you're going to lose the yellow line, it would start when you had on the monthly. It would start when you have a divergence present on the weekly. Okay. Let's look at sentiment real quick. Looks like people are still pretty bullish. Okay, one year bullish high is 52. We're, we were at 45. All right. Not, in my opinion, everyone thinks they're too bullish. Another thing that happened this week the SOM rule was officially triggered. This is designated to signal the start of recession. It's reached when five, you know, I'll let you guys read this. I don't need to read it to you. This is from Market Watch. You can go Google it, S-A-H-M rule. Take a read, okay? Predicts recession. Let's take a look at some of the intermarket analysis. You know the ones I like. Are we seeing a flight to safety? We certainly are. Okay, you see this blue line that was holding since the lows in Q4 2023? 
Well, they broke. And you now have this, you see this green rising above blue. You now have green falling below blue. Okay, and now bonds are waking up and they're acting as a flight to safety. Spy versus gold. Okay, now I could draw a trend line down here and expect some, some form of rally here. I could also say that this is a high, this is a low, this is a lower high. So until we figure out if we're gonna get a higher low or not, on watch. Spy versus cash, it's still telling you that equities are the place to be over cash. Spy versus DBC, it's still telling you prefer equities over commodities. IWM versus QQQ, this is very interesting. So we're seeing a shift in this ratio. Okay, so keep an open mind that IWM would outperform QQQ while we look at the charts that I'm about to pull up. Keep an eye that SMH may underperform SPY. Why? Well, the same green cross above blue that we got back here, little bear trap right here, just got triggered again. And this time, momentum is, a, is in a much worse situation. So just another thing to keep in mind. Right? That there, there are a lot of risks and a lot of things that are saying you might want to look at flight to safety and you might want to look at small caps. Okay. That being said, let's look at some more charts. IWM versus SPY. All right, is this another bull trap? Just like right here? It's possible. We're gonna have to see that one play out. Okay, here's, here's the last chart I wanna share with you. This one came from McClellan Financial Publications. He's noted and has noted this and studied this for quite a while. He's also the guy that developed the McClellan Oscillator that every time the green two-year T-note yield gets extremely ahead of the black line, which is the Fed Fund's target, you get a very, very serious problem. Okay, So right now, the Fed, the bond market don't agree. And this is why you're going to hear lots of people saying the Fed should have cut rates this week. I myself agree. All right, so let's take a look at the charts again. So here we go. We've already reviewed SPY. Let's take a look at the leader, SMH. She's done. A clear break of a trend line, a clear break of the 20, could rally back to 239 in the coming week, which is the 20 before ultimately falling down here to 200. She could also just gap lower and fall right to 200, which would set up left shoulder, head, right shoulder type of thing, creating the neckline right here. Okay, we have the divergence, we have the break in momentum. Okay, just like you had back here. And we have the subjective pattern of a head and shoulders setting up, meaning rallies to 230 and to 240 are for selling until we can negate this. Dips into 198 and this blue line for buying. Another thing of note is look at what happened here with this massive volume spike after this massive run up. Okay. Like these big red bars are not good. You don't want them on the chart and they signal a change in character. Okay, this is the leader. It looks very weak. If you look at the monthly, look at where she's finding supply. Does this make sense? The same problem SPY is having. 
SMH is the leader in SPY. Let's take a look at QQQ. Okay, do we have a similar problem here in the queues? No, we don't. Okay. Wave one high back here, wave two low, three, four, looking for a five right now. Do we have weakness in the queues? Yes, we're below last week's or last month's low, and we are pulling back to the orange line, 440. This orange line has held for the entire trend. You are in a bull configuration, EMA5 above SMA 10 and above all moving averages, 50 above 200, both sloping up. This is a bull configuration and dips into the orange line and the yellow line have been and continue to be for buying. That being said, keep an eye out if 435 does not catch a bid. What do we have here on this chart? Head and shoulders top, just like the one I showed you on SMH. We have a pullback to former resistance. This is the first chance for the bulls to try to rally. Now we zoom in to the weekly and you can see that we've closed below the 200, the, the 20 and are pulling back. All right, what was resistance is now support. And we just set another bear trap like we did back here, where in this instance, we fell back to previous resistance, confirmed demand, rally to new all time high and five wave structure, pull back to wave one, rinse repeat. I don't know, we'll have to see. We're gonna learn something either way. Either the 20 is gonna break this week and they're gonna to rally to 455 and then pull all the way back down here to 416 and the, and the 50 on the weekly, or they're gonna save 450 and start trying to work their way back up to 473. We really just don't know. The reality is pattern broke, downside target for the pattern, essentially hit to a T, okay? So now we don't know, right? It's at former resistance. So they have an opportunity to play defense, but this momentum is so strong that even if they do play defense, it'll be something like this. It's not gonna be something like this. It just won't. Do you see how long it took before it did that? Right, look at the momentum. It just got here. It had to do this down here before it finally launched. All right. So easy money trade in queues is done. And if you're interested in making money in queues, come back in September, October. But until then, this is the textbook topping pattern at resistance volume flooding in, weekly bearish divergence, break of trend line. It's all the hallmarks that are telling you the cues are done. Okay. I was a seller here and a seller here. I'm all out of TQQQ. I love this product. It's one of the best things to trade and I will be a buyer again, just a lot lower. Um, I'm looking for when we get to this part of the cycle, right? That's when I'll be interested again, not the moment the histogram flips negative, right? Look, look, it just flipped negative. Give it time. Okay. Let's take a look at IWM where it just flipped positive. Now, what scares me and many, many other people is the size of this. This is an outside bearish reversal candle on volume. Okay. Open, close near the low. This does not happen often. Happened back here, scared the hell out of a lot of people back here too. Okay. This is not good. All right. If you go back, this is what COVID looked like right? When you get a 10% move in one week, 
It's a very, very rare thing. Okay, and it signals a big change in the market. And you have to pay attention to these when they come on above average volume. You zoom into the daily though, and you say, well, wait a minute, this is a triangle. And we just, we just went back to where we broke out. We, that's a throwback. And I would say, yeah, that's true. But this also could be an island top, right? And this is what makes the market. We just, it's one candle. We don't have enough information yet, right? The bulls will feel a lot better if 206.99 does not break this week. That's simple. And this is the line in the sand, 200. You get below 200, this trade is dead. There's no reason to be in here. And what's more likely on the table is another large zigzag. Finishing the lost decade, right? Here's your lost decade. Here's your 2014 March. We'll get there around 2026 as the bear market ends. Right? This is definitely on the table. This entire thing is corrective. Look at it. It is not impulsive. This is impulsive. Corrective. How do I know it's corrective? It's just a bunch of sideways chop. Sideways chop. Okay. It's a correction. This is an impulsive move. Impulsive move. Impulsive move. Follows what? Correction. Okay. So right now we have whether we want to say impulsive move down, I don't know, but we can certainly say massive correction. And until she can get above 250 and set and start marching to all time highs, it's still a correction. Now, where do we sit from, from the ledger on the monthly? It's in a bull mode, bull configuration, bull trend on the weekly bull trend on the daily, just fire to sell. Okay, so it looks very different than the others. Let's take a look at IYT. And this right here is the biggest red flag. So either A, your ABC just finished, or B, this thing's about to get real ugly. And this gap right here is a breakaway gap and is signaling the start of another one of these. Okay. IYT avoid, right? Trapped everyone again, right here. Hey, look, new all time high. Hey, look, cup and handle, right? And maybe this is the handle and maybe this is it. The 20 holds, the 50 holds, so 60 holds and that's the end of the bear, right? That's That fits nicely with the IWM's gonna rally here off of 203, right? Capture this level, pull back, leave. It's entirely possible. I keep an open mind. Let's take a look at those flight to safety candidates I showed you earlier. Well, this is clearly a downtrend and this has done nothing in damn near 40 years or 20 years at this point. Okay. That being said, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. I don't like this pattern when it's, when it's collapsed like this. I prefer this pattern when it's, if I must show you that the Nvidia example, I will. Right, but this pattern here, left, head, right, when it's basically all at the same level, okay, it was off by mm, not even a dollar. Okay, now the difference with TLT in this pattern is that the difference here is 109, and our neckline break down here at 94. Well, she could travel. 17% and still not even hit this, right? Putting in a left shoulder, rounding out the neck, pull back again for the right shoulder, right? So it, it's just so early, I can't really tell. But what I will say is this is a breakout. This is a textbook breakout. The 100 to 110 are the targets and that you haven't missed anything. This is a breakout Buy the dip in bonds. It's a breakout. Where are we looking for this to end? Either at 100 to 109. I can't tell. Take a look at gold. 
GLD, breakout, buy the dip where? Anywhere. Any dip into 200. Any dip you get. This is an uptrend. I don't know what else to tell you. This is congestion, broke above. Any pullback that you get, any weakness into 194, into 200, you buy the, the I am buying this dip. That's what I'm doing. And when I see these these ratios flip and the flight to safety trade kick in, you gotta pay attention. Okay, I wanna talk about FSLR, one of the more interesting trades, but look, I mean, I, I fully anticipate the 20 to hold, but the 20 just was lost. Okay. Could be pulling back here to 188 and 179 but is doing a lot better than some of these other names. All right, Nvidia already down 30%. When I, you know, was looking at Nvidia 3 weeks ago or FSLR 3 weeks ago, she's she's green from that area, right? 3 weeks ago for any tech name is down 20%. So that's been one nice place to hide. But in general, it's TLT and gold. There isn't really a stock that you can buy. I mean, there's XLU Utilities are outperforming. Talked about this. XLC was outperforming and then is putting a nasty, nasty candle here on the weekly. Healthcare is outperforming. So these are the sectors in the S&P that are doing well, which is why SPY is, is only down a few percent, 5% at this point. While SMH, the leader, has officially entered a bear market. It's already down 23, 24%. And I wanted to end the video here by reviewing the VIX. If you take a look at the weekly, we have a little bit of an upper wick here. Price got all the way up to the 30s. I do want to point out the histogram is increasing week over week. We haven't peaked yet. If you look back here, that is when you should expect a, a peak in price. Okay, so whenever the histogram peaks, it's generally when VIX peaks. You can go back and review this for yourself. So right now it's still increasing week over week. And until we have a decline, we cannot say that it's peaked. Looking at the daily, we have a massive gap up above all the downtrends. So to me, this is a clear break and this is a clear change in character. And if you look at the monthly, you can expect sellers up here in the 30 to $50 range. It's a massive range. And the way that they're moving this, I would expect them to get there very quickly. I mean, look at what they did in one day. If they do that again, they're at 43. Like literally they could do it, to, they could do it on Monday. Okay, and they can get all the way up here to the extreme where you would anticipate a low in equities. All right, it's also possible that price is contained here by this little downtrend that, that we have. And as long as pr price stays below 26, uh, this thing is pretty capped. That was your spike in fear. That's your low in equities, and we'll move on from there. I don't have enough evidence to support that yet. Okay, we just have a big wick on the daily. The point of me bringing this up is just to show you that fear has returned. The conditions are ripe, right, for a rise in the VIX. And while she's above 20, the risk is to the downside for equities. Below 20, buy the dip. As soon as we get above 20, you have to be very careful and wait on the sidelines or in the flight to safeties until we have signs that it's over. Okay, now, maybe that was Friday. I don't know. I don't have enough information yet to tell you one way or another. I can just say that when you get these massive gap ups, massive runs on the VIX, you need to be careful 
and the higher she gets above 30, 40, 50, these are, this is where she's historically bottomed. Okay, even during the 08, she got up to 90. Okay, during uh, March of 2020, all the way up here to 86. Maybe she's going to 80 again. I have no idea. But as you can tell, it's, it's very rare for her to get, get and stay above. On the monthly here, I mean, she, she rarely has done it. Lots of wicks into the zone. Lots of wicks. Okay, rarely does she get above and stay above. So we got to see what, what happens here. But she's getting into that $30 range. And it's something to watch out for. Uh, that being said, I hope you like the content. I hope you like the video. And I'll see you guys later.